Hello, I'm Sergeant Vance Chandler with the Public Information Office of the Sacramento Police Department. This incident briefing will provide you with information about a vehicle collision that occurred in the north area of our city on July 22, 2018. In this briefing, we will present relevant video footage, photographs, and other evidence to inform you of what occurred based on our understanding at this stage of the investigation. Please keep in mind that this investigation is still in progress and we continue to collect and analyze additional evidence and interview witnesses. A word of caution to sensitive viewers, the images and information that we will present may be disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. The video and audio footage has been redacted to ensure the confidentiality and privacy of those involved. Due to the seriousness of this incident, our major collision investigative unit responded to the scene and took over the investigation. Detective Allen is the lead investigator for this vehicle collision and he will provide more details related to this investigation. Hello, my name is James Allen. I'm a detective with the Sacramento Police Department and I'm currently assigned to the Major Collision Investigations Unit. I'm going to give you a brief overview of the facts surrounding a collision that occurred on Sunday, July 22, 2018 at around 10 p.m. in the 900 block of Eleanor Avenue. As indicated on this map of the area, the 900 block of Eleanor Avenue is an eastbound-westbound street. The 900 block of Eleanor is bordered by Branch Street to the east and Rialinda Boulevard to the west. In the area of Eleanor Avenue and Branch Street, a two-officer patrol unit was headed westbound on Eleanor, approaching the intersection with Branch Street, as indicated by the blue star on the map. They observed a male with no shirt and blue jeans riding a bicycle on the north sidewalk of Eleanor Avenue. The officers recognized that the bicyclist did not have a forward-facing white light on the bicycle during darkness. This is a violation of 21201D1 of the California Vehicle Code, which states, in summary, that a bicycle ridden during hours of darkness is required to have a forward-facing white light. The officer driving positioned the patrol vehicle on the north curb of Eleanor Avenue. At about 10 p.m., an enforcement stop was made on the mail. You can stop. You can stop. Okay. How old are you? Fifteen? Yeah. You look old for fifteen. Really? Yeah. I just feel me like saving at a young age. Yeah. What are you so worried about? I'm not worried. You're not tripping? The officer driving recognized the suspect from a previous contact and asked the suspect if he had a warrant. You ever been arrested before? Huh? You have a warrant again? The suspect then attempted to ride away from the officers. The passenger officer attempted to detain the suspect unsuccessfully, and a foot pursuit of the suspect ensued west on the north sidewalk of Eleanor Avenue. Hey, hey! Oh, shit! As the foot pursuit began, there was an officer in the area on routine patrol. This officer was driving a marked police SUV equipped with an in-car camera. The officer began to head in the direction of the initial stop and then activated his lights and siren in response to assist in the foot pursuit. The officer traversed the intersection of Eleanor and Rio Linda and accelerated. You need to come in east, man. It's coming right to you. The suspect came into view of the in-car camera running along the north sidewalk of Eleanor Avenue. Although the actual speed of the vehicle is still under investigation, the reported speed per the in-car camera indicated 27 miles per hour. The speed limit for this residential area is 25 miles per hour. In an attempt to assist the officers in the foot pursuit in detaining the suspect, the officer made an abrupt left turn. We can see from the body-worn camera footage that the steering wheel is turned all the way to the left. We can also see that hard braking was done from the in-car camera footage as indicated by the braking indicator, or the B, that is displayed at the top left. Due to the speed, the patrol vehicle went into an understeer. Understeer is a loss of traction to the front tires while attempting to turn. This results in the vehicle continuing in a straighter line than intended. This typically happens to a vehicle entering a turn too fast. As the turn is initiated and the speed is too great, the mass of the vehicle and the tendency of the vehicle to want to continue its straight line progress will overcome the friction of the cantering or turning of the tires. 
The only remedy to this situation is to slow down in order to regain the rolling friction of the cantered front wheels to complete the turn. Until then, the vehicle will continue in the direction of its original path. At this point, the officer had lost control of the patrol vehicle. At 10 p.m. and 50 seconds, a collision between the suspect and the patrol vehicle occurred. The suspect was continuing to attempt to elude police and crossed into the path of the out-of-control patrol vehicle. The suspect wrapped onto the hood of the patrol vehicle and ultimately came to rest in the front yard of a residence on Eleanor Avenue. Milliseconds later, a collision between the patrol vehicle, which is still out of control, and a vehicle parked in the driveway of the residence occurred. The patrol vehicle continued along its path of travel and came to rest in the front yard of the residence. The officer immediately exited the patrol vehicle, detained the suspect, and started initial medical care. At 10.07 p.m., the Sacramento Fire Department arrived and continued medical care of the suspect. The suspect was ultimately transported by the Sacramento Fire Department to the hospital at 10.10 p.m., three minutes after their arrival and 10 minutes after the collision. There was a short delay in the response of the medical aid due to the officers having to facilitate the safe ingress of medical personnel and the egress with the suspect. This delay was due to officers having to maintain scene security due to a large crowd that had gathered. The following is body camera footage of scene security by the officers. The suspect was later identified as a 16-year-old male. He was treated for non-life-threatening injuries at a local area hospital and released a few hours later with a citation for resisting arrest. Our detective unit was called to the scene and took over the investigation. Before our arrival, the area had been canvassed and witnesses had been interviewed and identified. One witness had been transported from the scene via ambulance due to a complaint of pain to her head with the assistance of officers on scene. Prior to her being transported, an initial statement had been taken by responding officers. At no time during the statement did she tell the officer that she had been struck by the patrol vehicle. We received information that this witness was claiming that she had been hit by the patrol vehicle and been injured as a result. On July 24th, I went back to the 900 block of Eleanor Avenue to contact the witness in an attempt to clarify her statement and determine if she was a party to the collision. I asked the witness questions about where she was at the time of the collision to compare them with the in-car camera video from the involved patrol vehicle and the body camera footage from responding officers. The witness stated that she was standing right next to the right rear of the vehicle in the driveway moments before the collision and was hit by the patrol vehicle in the driveway. The in-car camera footage clearly shows that no one was standing next to the vehicle in the driveway as the collision occurred and body camera footage from the officers in the foot pursuit showed the witness walking up the driveway from the residence next door after the collision had already occurred. A second witness was contacted by officers during an additional canvas who stated that he had seen the collision and that he saw the previous witness get hit by the patrol vehicle. Based on the videos, we have determined this statement to be inaccurate. Overall, the investigation determined that there were no additional injured parties to the collision. Ultimately, the investigation has shown that the collision was unintended. Due to the speed that the turn was initiated at, the officer lost control of the patrol vehicle and began to understeer. The officer did not regain control of the vehicle until moments before or at the time the patrol vehicle came to a stop after the collision had already occurred. 
The investigation has determined that the speed is the primary reason the incident occurred. The officer was traveling at an unsafe speed for the attempted turn. This unsafe speed resulted in a loss of control and ultimately resulted in a collision with the suspect, the parked vehicle, and the landscaping items in the front yard of the residence. The Sacramento Police Department continues to investigate this incident. Even an unintended collision with a subject under these circumstances is not an acceptable outcome and is inconsistent with our policies and training. We will review our current policies and procedures in an effort to prevent something like this from occurring in the future. As we continue to investigate this vehicle collision, our police department encourages any witnesses with information regarding this incident to contact our dispatch center at 916-808-5471 or Sacramento Valley Crime Stoppers at 916-443-4357 or submit an anonymous tip using the free P3Tips smartphone app.